watching AYV Television. Don't rush. Slow down. We care. We have given you more time. Yes, we have extended the deadline. This means housemate Cerulean application forms will be available until 31st August at every AYB and AFRICEL office nationwide and on www.africel.sl and www.aybnews.com. Don't miss out on this opportunity. You could be the next big thing in Salon, Housemate Salon Season 2, Quarantine Drama. Brought to you by AYV and Afrizel. Thirsty. Me too dry, yeah. Thirsty. Sierra. Sierra. We they happy with the ginger. Sierra has a natural new flavor. And it's called ginger juice. It's so amazing, so refreshing. Sierra has a natural new flavor. And it's called ginger juice. Gonna give you stamina. We got the juice. Tell me who got the juice. Sierra got the juice. Hey, who got the juice? Hey, we got the juice. Tell me who got the juice. Sierra got the juice. That ginger, that ginger juice, that ginger. Give me that ginger juice, that ginger. That ginger juice, that ginger. I wanna be in the mood. Thirsty, thirsty. We could die out. Thirsty, Sierra. Really happy with the ginger. Sierra juice. The taste of Salon. Today is Monday, the 31st of August, the last day in August. Good morning and welcome to Front Page on AYV Television on Channel 33 and also online at www.aivnews.com and on Facebook, Africa Young Voices Media Empire and for our listeners on radio, FM 101.6. My name is Bokari Matia. Front Page comes out at 11 a.m. from Monday to Friday. And in the program, we give you and analyze stories, findings and events from the Front Page's former local tabloids. We'll be reminded that the views of our panelists and other views of AYV. And you can also join in the program um, by sending your um, messages on our Facebook um, live page. Now, um, to start off with the program, let's start with the Africa Young Voices Media newspaper, which you can get for just 2,000 euros. And on the front page, yeah, it states, um, Ashu Dintage and Cole Honored with um, Law Moot Court competition. Mohamed Bangua warns Tolongbo, no amount of hate speech, but mouthing blackmail, falsehood, character assassination um, will change BO's reign. And ADP 2018 presidential candidate goes doggy. Egyptian ambassador impressed with Sierra Leone. Those are the front um, headlines on the front page of the African Young Voices Media newspaper. Over to the satellite on the front page, it states police questions, deportees um, from USA to eliminate delay in payment benefits. NASIT Director General educates 15 infantry brigade on scheme management. Tourism Ministry caters for every <coughs> registered tourism worker. And those are the headlines on the front page of the satellite newspaper. And over to the Concord Times on the front page, I said government <coughs> to shut down operations of 23 mining companies. Metrological agency educates journalists, communities on weather forecasts. And 463 million school children unable to access remote learning, according to a UNICEF report. And a disaster at New England falling to destroys homes. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Congo Times newspaper. Over to the Standard Times on the front page, yeah, I said sex scandal, 15 years old victim testifies. And um, secret meeting, Chief Justice named. B.O. admitted at COVID-19 unit American University in Beirut. Those are the headlines down the front page of the Standard Times newspaper. Over to the exclusive newspaper on the front page, it says special high courts open with 353 cases. And NRM APC romance, Alpha Timbu reinstated, and Kamarimba nailed. Those are the headlines on the front page of the exclusive newspaper. Over to the Aoko newspaper on the front page, it says, Kamarimba told me to touch my knees. Witness testifies. And voting is not um, a profession. It is just <coughs> one of the means to good governance, according to the new NEC chairman. And um, Alpha Timbo, Emily Gogra reinstated. 
Sludge uh, calls for responsible use of social media. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Aoko newspaper. Over to the Premier News on the front page here is Human Rights Commission condemns hate message. Oriel Insurance Company Limited makes uh, marks over three makes uh, sorry over three billion profit. Buffs hands over IT equipment to Agriculture Ministry and also another issues on the page COVID nineteen fight. Chinese military medical experts help Sierra Leone. Um, FAO reviews animal disease surveillance and reporting system. COVID-19, at least a third of the world's school children unable to access remote learning during school closure, new UNICEF report says. And Real Mark FC pathways with head coach. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Premier News newspaper. <coughs> Over to um, the Sierra update on the front page. Yeah, it states High Court commences um, criminal session. And that's the big headline on the front page of the Sierra Update newspaper. Over to the um, Watch Independent newspaper on the front page. It says Slayers receives 12.4 uh, million United States dollars recovery fund. Chinese Norwegian FMS holds um, talks on bilateral ties. RC doles out to students. Natcom DG assures quality delivery. And Bombali and Kadine districts to benefit from sleeper export drive. Those are the headlines down the front page of the Watch Independent newspaper. Over to the Beyond Borders newspaper on the front page, I said 15 year old testifies how Kamarimba abused her as state prosecutor whips. Parliament to declare a vote of no confidence in EDSA and EGTC. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Beyond Borders newspaper. And over to the New Citizen Tolongo newspaper on the front page, I said, Parliamentary Committee blocks cancellation of 23 mining license. Female people down, drowns in Pujahun and ACC interact with police personnel in Kamakwe. Those are the headlines on the front page of the New Citizen Tolongo newspaper. And over to the News Watch on the front page, I said, um, Sludge calls for responsible use of social media. Midterm Census Technical Committee holds maiden meeting. Iceman records the new face of Sierra Leone Entertainment. Those are the headlines down the front page of the Newswatch newspaper. And lastly, before me is the Awareness Times newspaper. And on the front page, I state, are Sierra Leoneans to storm uh, Virgis Park with black in the park demo? H.E. Mada Bio is focused on protest in London today. Sylvia Olanka Blyden explains pause in continuation of audios. SLM, SLMET conducts training on daily weather forecasts for media persons. High Court criminal sessions commence with 353 accused persons. Alfred Paolo Conte's appeal court case gets adjourned to October 13th, 2020. Honorable Dauda Jawara Mansari wants NEC to declare winner of constituency 110 by election is uh, Honorable Kadi Davis. Those are the headlines there on the front page of the Awareness Times <coughs> newspaper. But to let me discuss this and more in the studio, I have there with me Melvin Tijan Mansari. Um, he's a journalist and, of course, um, Honorable Bamichiri, a political analyst. Gentlemen, you're welcome to the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Um, Melvin, let me start off with you. Um, the name of Kamarimba and that the um, alleged sexual penetration trial has been mentioned in almost um, all of the papers. And on the YV paper, it says ADP 2018 presidential candidate goes doggy. Now, um, the principal witness in the ongoing trial against the accused presidential candidate for the Alliance Democratic Party, Mohamed Kamarimba Mansari, has told the court that um, the accused um, took her into his unfinished building in Kono took off her pants, bent her down, and slammed her with his dick from the back, a sex position universally known as doggy. And Kamarimba is being charged with um, the second accused, Marion Aruni, on multiple criminal offenses relating to conspiracy or sexual penetration of a minor. What's your take on um, the court proceedings that happened? Um, and, of course, they are slated to appear to court again today on the 31st of August. I should say thanks to the judiciary for dispensing what I would describe as justice with expedition, meaning there is no delay in this trial. It is expeditious. I'll put it again. Um, as to what is being said in the court, it's a process. It's a process being led now wherein we are, we are hearing testimonies from, from the prosecutor 
or the prosecution, prosecution team. And in this case, always that's just the narrative. While prosecuting such allegations, you will hear sometimes horrific testimonies. And it all will boil, boil up to the fact that the defense also will be given an opportunity to make a, a case of defense for, 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 in this case, the, the, the politician in question. But again, I am not a lawyer. I don't want to venture into the legalese into, into that. But for a politician as high profile as Mohamed Kamarimba, so although it's an allegation to, be, to have been alleged to take someone, a minor, at an unfinished building, I mean, for me, that, that, is, that is somehow unbelievable. But again, it's a matter before the courts, and I hope um, evidence will be adduced to the effect to prove him guilty or not guilty. To, I mean, like I said, it's a legal process, and we should be restrained in coming out with particularly subjective statements because it's just one side of the story we are hearing, which is the prosecution team. Until and unless we hear from the, from the defense, and there is a cross-examination of all the testimonies, and the matter will be up for the jurors, and to come out with a, a ruling, I think we should be restrained. But it's, it's, it's horrific. And although the elements of truth cannot be ascertained as at now, but if that is so, it means we have a lot of work to do, especially with that factor of not only minor, but an unfinished building. If that is true, I think, I think, I think we, 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 we should. But like I said, I want to exercise some caution in, in, in this whole matter. Now, now this is the most high-profile case on um, alleged sexual penetration that has come before uh, um, the court. I mean, we, we've been talking on um, um, rape and um, sexual and gender-based <coughs> violence against women for the past six to seven years now, and um, the awareness of um, gender and sexual-based violence came after the Hannah um, Bokari's case at uh, uh, um, um, Beach Road um, around Aberdeen and Lomley, and then since then we've had uh, multiple of cases um, before um, the court, and um, that has led, of course, to um, the institution of a special court mm -hmm. on um, gender and sexual based violence. And then um, we are now seeing Spirit Girl, of course, the first of which we, we saw um, the sentencing of um, a bike rider to 15 years imprisonment mm -hmm. for, uh, for alleged rape. Now, on your whole, how do you see, um, what's your take on the Spirit Girl, and then how, how high? As, uh, has, as the issue of gender and sexual based violence gone, looking at the fact that we have a former presidential candidate being accused, mm -hmm. um, th that was a presidential candidate that would have become a president in, in 2018 and that has been accused. So how serious should we take the issue of um, gender and sexual based violence? Again, let's not, I mean, mystify this whole um, <laughs> issue for the fact that even if it's proven guilty, Mohamed Kamarimba is not the only high-profile politician that has been roped and convicted, if convicted in his own case. Mm -hmm. So this is, I mean, I, I think I'll speak to, I would like to <laughs> just limit myself to the realities of what does this mean for the campaign. It means a lot, but it also means that the government should be commended that people protested and requested that there should be an established um, special court for, for such. And now we are seeing the fruits of the, the special court. Again, this is not a judicial matter only. This is a cultural matter also, wherein we used to know back then it's in some places, people still believe it's happening. We are in some families will give their, their children, particularly their girl child, to, to some big folk because of perhaps poverty or some other reasons. And in this case, again, let me just make a correction. I heard you mention rape. There is a difference between sexual penetration and rape. Rape is the, when you apply force. Sexual penetration, in this case, once that child is under 18, be it a family marriage, be it a, them, if you married away, small quote unquote, the law now frowns at that. So in, in this particular case, I think we should not be only looking at the judicial factors, mm -hmm. but we should be looking at other interrelated factors in this. Because I will tell you, even if he's convicted or not convicted, he is not the first person to engage in this. So, or alleged, allegedly engage in this. So, I mean, are there many other Kamarimbas? Or is it that they are just fortunate? Or even, in fact, could it come out, can it be a scapegoat in this case? So if you want to look at it from a critical lens, we have so many angles to pull these things. But for this while, I think we should commend our judiciary. It shows that we are serious. And I am looking forward for those global data to show an improvement in the rights of women and girls. But again, it's not just that aspect of conviction. What you do when you convict someone at the end of the day, that person serves time and come back and becomes a predator in the community. That's why some people have been advocating for, let's have a, a blacklist of 
I mean, convicted violators. We are in, if you are a politician or not politician, once you are convicted of such, your name is there. It's a public document and it can be accessed. But for now, it can be easily and safely argued that, oh, he's a politician. What if his political opponents are using this against him? Mm -hmm. So uh, we should be very, very... Uh, 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 and, that, and that's the next question I, I wanted to put before <coughs> um, um, Honorable Bamichidi. Um, you were or are still um, a politician yourself because you help us um, on a day-to-day -day basis um, politically analyzing some of um, these headlines that we go through every day. What's your take on, um, from the political lens, what's your take on, 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 on the whole story that is involving former presidential um, flag bearer of um, the Alliance Democratic Party? Thank you very much. I think what should we look at the way and manner the process is going on within the judiciary. At least it's transparent enough and the calling witness. I won't go to the little bit of because it's this um, for the high court. Mm -hmm. But at least it sends a signal to people over senior citizens to be careful in the comportment of their daily lives. Because the reason why this thing is going to do is to put a stop. Though we have traditional areas mm -hmm. which is we don't stop. We have, we have to keep educating and sensitizing these people within the tradition that. Don't talk to small girls. Leave them till they're 18. Whether they go fast or not, leave them till they're 18. Come on, say what should do. Stop that nonsense. But now, it sends signal again. What was, in the, uh, what was doing, done in the dark has come back to the open because the girl is testifying of what, because there were so many doubts of what really transpired, either in the hotel or in the, bed, uh, uh, in the house or something. At his home. Mm -hmm. But with all this, there is tendency for us to start and buy good discipline. We will not be saying something with one hand and then the other chick is saying something different. Let us avoid and try to protect our children. Do it's, it's maybe it's the vogue. And then for some of these perpetrators who are child molester, they have some kind of psychological problem which is to make sure we provide counseling for other people so that it won't fall. Uh, uh, in fact, that, that's what I wanted to ask, because um, when, when, when you look at um, <coughs> the, the political wheel um, in terms of um, curbing sexual penetration or sexual gender-based violence, um, I, that political wheel can be seen. We, I, I mean, we have the establishment of the special court mm -hmm. now, and we also um, saw what um, was done with um, um, the law books, um, refining um, the, the, the sentences and terms mm -hmm. there. Um, if a person is being convicted, I mean, and, and the first lady, of course, um, she's also having our campaign, the Hands of Our Girls campaign. There seems to be the political reform this administration. But w w when you look at all what civil society organizations have done for the past, I mean, I, I remember even when I, was, when I was a boy going to school, we had um, school group clubs um, and preaching against teenage pregnancy, you know, and this and that. And, this, and, and that is still going on. Mm -hmm. And we are now at uh, the technology age where we still see these activities are still going on. And we're having pr people as high profile being um, alleged um, to be involved in uh, um, sexual penetration as, as, as high profile as Kamarimba. What <coughs> more do we need to do? Which sector... I mean, we, we, we <coughs> will say that the parents need to do more. Um, do we need to go back to our school system and see how we can educate um, people, girls and boys on, on how um, to treat women or how should women behave? Thank you very much. You see, first of all, because of the high profile nature of these cases, you hear, you hear a lot of it. But that one goes from the grass, from, from the poor man down the road. They are doing this, they are perpetrating all these things more than the high profile people. But it is sending a signal to them, if you are preaching something for the good of your constituents, make sure you don't perpetrate it yourself. This should be a wake-up call for big men, and if they prosecute them, that will be able to deter them. Unless you are sick in the head, you won't be able to deter, but at least mm -hmm. let's put an end, we won't eradicate it, but let us minimize it so that the signal has been sent that no to rape, or sexual penetration of young girls should be an end to it. At least we reduce the number. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, yeah, I, I think we've, we've done so well in talking about the judicial, the moral, <coughs> and, and perhaps the cultural aspect. But one aspect we should not lose sight of again is that of the political aspect. Mm -hmm. This man is the leader of a political party. What happens if he is convicted? What, how will that affect his support base? 
Will this matter not see, by extension, the end of the life of the ADP? And what if he is not convicted? What will this mean in terms of replication in votes? Will he get that kind of Mandela character or stardom status? So it's it's, it's yeah. something it's seen, it's it's something that will I mean Anabu Banerjee you cannot discard that. What if he's not convicted and people say oh perhaps he was framed and some people will, will just use that as sympathy vote. Say okay let's sympathize with this man. So in politics I know you're a politician but there are several factors that can law people to come close you or go against you. So I think this case also will be an, a, a very, very pivotal determinant in the life of the ADP and what it, it will mean for the general political landscape also where you will see other political parties, but dominantly the APC and SLPP, it's going to consolidate their, 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 their stronghold. So this will be also something to, to politically look as to how it all pans out. All right, um, um, let's look at our next story, it's still under AYV newspaper yeah, that says Mohamed Bangura warns Tolongo um, that no amount of hate speech, bad mouthing, blackmail, falsehood, and character assassination will change BOZ. And uh, let me just take you through, and this is uh, written by Aruna Ture, the editor, and it says, um, All People's Congress APC elected member of parliament for constituency 066 <coughs> in Karina District, Honorable Mohamed Bangura, has cautioned his party against distracting the reign of President Julius Madabio. He said, um, the fact remains, President Julius Madabio is the president of Sierra Leone, and until um, the year 2023, no amount of hate speech, bad mouthing, blackmail, falsehood, character assassination or inflammatory speeches, um, be it virtual or real, will change this constitutionality, um, constitutional reality. The MP further salutes the Salem People's Party move to publicly condemn um, indecency and hate speech on social media by its supporters while describing the move of the new dawn in Sierra Leone quest to curb lawlessness and threat to internal peace and security. Honorable. Yeah, thank you. Well, you see, most, instead of we doing the right thing in Sierra Leone, we keep bickering over petty things in politics. If you notice, both sides have not done nothing much. We just we, they concentrate, we stop looking at good governance, how we're going to improve good governance in the country. We continue on party politics. Which is not going to help you, which is not going to help the nation. Because he too is member of parliament. He has his say, he has his voice. But we have been allowing all this hate speech and all these things to be going on, how for do, way for do. And then 2023 is coming. Are we serving our people? We should be putting our house in order, whether in opposition or in the government, so that you can able to tell the people, during my five years in office, this is what I've done. But we keep crisscrossing, mm -hmm. banting words and all, which is not good for the country. Mm -hmm. Let us consider in good governance. And allow the party that won the election to rule. Now, now, now uh, looking at uh, um, the issue of um, um, blackmail, falsehood, character assassination, and so on and so forth, um, this is going right across the board. Not only for, um, um, uh, it's not only happening to members of SLPP, it's also happening to members of the People's Congress yes, Party. It's what I uh, and it's on social media. What political um, step do you, do you think? these political parties should take in order for this to end because <coughs> as, as far as as far as this thing of um, social media audios and um, defamatory and so on and so on is concerned it's been done by Sierra Leoneans and these Sierra Leoneans are associating themselves with um, each of these political parties and uh, of course we are expecting political parties to distance themselves from from these people but these acts will continue uh, in in and out what more do we need to do as a citizen or what more do um, government needs to do in order to curb what's happening on, on social media of course looking at the fact that sludge also has called for responsible use of social media because this is another trend this it's after 2018 that the social media have taken more dominance even taking the role of channeling political activities. So with the political, but more the opposition, should make sure if they strategize, because they're in opposition hoping to get government, to strategize and change the pattern of things. If these are operatives, are operating, try to distance yourself from them and make sure you concentrate in building your party for the election. Like us of the government, you are talking about the only accountable thing you have to do is good governance. What have you done in terms of good governance, the divide, this, um, um, what they call this vengeance or other kind of thing? You should think of the past to make sure you give good governance to your people. 
And if the, both parties concentrate on that, at the end of the day, we have the choice to vote who wants to lead the next government after 2023. But for now, none of them are doing nothing. Everybody's concentrating in party politics. Melvin. Oh, several issues there to, <coughs> to, to highlight. <coughs> Firstly, let's look at the current position of Honorable Mohamed Bangura as a sitting member of parliament. And I'll put this uh, article into two perspectives. Political correctness, which is, what is he saying? Is it, is, it, is it saying what should be said by a politician at the right time versus political party discipline? Is he reflecting the views of his political party? That's another aspect. Because for one thing I, I know from going through that publication is the fact that, um, yes, the SBP has for once in a very long time come out to condemn the action or inactions of some of his supporters by calling them overzealous and promising to investigate that case. Again, the person in question for which that, in my opinion, that SLPP public notice was done, is still a serving senior official in the SLPP party. Mm -hmm. So perhaps the question begs, what has been done with regards to him and that statement? But generally, political discipline here will have to do with, like I said, is the honorable member reflecting the views of his party? Because if that is his view, I, I, if that is his party's view, I think one thing we should, we, we should have seen is for parliament to be to be convened for an emergency session on, 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 on aid speech and incendiary statements and come out with a, a resolution which they will forward to the executive, like they did in the case of Khadija, which we saw was speedily treated by the executive. So for me, I think, yes, we need our lawmakers, whosoever they are from whatever constituency, to come out and join the advocacy against aid, aid speech and incendiary comments. For me, that justification that, oh, so it happened then, so it will happen now, it will not go anywhere. We need to move on as a nation. And one way of moving on is to call out things by their real names. If an SLPP supporter misfires, that person should be named and shamed, as, as in this case, not entirely done, but partly done in that public notice. And again, politicians should always understand that they take the greatest responsibility when things go basak. Meaning that they have a duty of care to protect the lives and provide security for their people. Yes, I can understand a certain member of parliament who said he made similar comments on Facebook and he was detained and there are other people doing it. But again, is that the right thing to do? What is good for the goose must be good for the gander. And in this case, meet APCB, SLPP, every politician, particularly parliamentarian, must come out to condemn hate speech and incendiary comment. The, the, the impact of it. It will be so dire and it will be so consequential and we need not to tolerate it. So on one hand, I think the Honorable Mohamed Bangura is doing what is right, perhaps on his own behalf or on behalf of his political party, which is yet to do the needful in coming out to publicly say they, they are not in support of such kind of comments coming from the social media. The SLPP, they have done theirs, but is that enough? How, how concrete should these two political parties be involved, the, the APC and the SLPP? In, in, I, I think, like the Honorable Bangura suggested, there is a need for a, a cross-party task force on this particular issue, it's high time that the SLPP government, one thing I should, con I should critique this government about is that political affairs ministry. For me, I think it's, is it, it, do we have a political affairs, a public, uh, political affairs ministry? I don't think so at all. That ministry is supposed to be like a liaison between the parliament and that of the, 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 the executive in some of these issues. Have a task force on this, bring respectable people in these political parties together, give them the resources, give them a clear terms of reference, send them across the country. When a politician, when, when the ordinary Sierra Leonean see, oh, um, the likes of honorable, is, is, I mean, a member of parliament from APC, a member of parliament from SLPP, a member of parliament from C4C, parliamentary members of all speaking one message. That alone sends the biggest message <coughs> to constituents. So I think that's what we need. And the political parties, they should not be, be, be being politi too political about it. What is there to condemn hate speech? At the end of the day, if anything goes wrong, it's not just SLPP that will suffer. It's not just SMP supporters. Every one of us, some of us were here when they were break out in Sierra Leone. Everyone suffered. And in fact, the worst thing, some of these politicians, they will, they will, they will just escape the country and go abroad and they will, be, they will be there commentating on the issue here. We saw it happen. So we don't need to, we need to hold our authorities, our um, political authorities into account. And in this case, we should demand that the parliament be convened and there should be a resolution by parliament on aid speech. And among those resolutions being advanced to the, to the executive, let there be a special committee on this with clear mandates and resources to go across the country. Because at the end of the day, we can talk and talk and talk. But if that ordinary Sierra Union does not see that red man, that's green man, they, 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 they just don't, they'll just hold their views and keep to it. And that's what we do want to see in this country. Honorable, it, it's, quite, it's quite clear for, for um, I, think, I think, the past six or nine months or so, <coughs> 
we've had um, incidents that have happened and um, one way or the other, whether through the mainstream media or through social media, we've linked those um, incidents with um, hate speech and incitement from social <coughs> media and from audios or videos and, and, and it seems as if um, the, the advocates, just like how Emma Sin said, are becoming uh, um, um, <coughs> higher in number on Facebook and on social media. And um, Melvin is suggesting we need to reconvene Parliament. We need to look at um, ways to resolve the issue of hate speech. We need to look at the political will. Are, are we at a point where um, we, we, we even need a policy or law to look at how, how social media is being used and how we can curtail? Because we, we, are, we are speaking on all of these. We are uh, it, it, it has to do with national peace and cohesion. Yes, we have been getting some regulations to come to tell the use of the social media. But to no avail. But the point, are we not saying, we know each and every person putting that post on the newspaper. Why don't we call ourselves and talk to them for, for the interest of peace in Sierra Leone? Because the country is really divided in the middle. What do we do? And we the politicians sit, take a back seat. We see these things going till it gets out of hand. Then we want to jump in. Mm -hmm. That's damage control. Because now that is why the numbers is increasing every day from one uh, audio message to a reply. So, and then we don't know where we're heading for. This is a different platform now for the 2023 election. Mm -hmm. And which means we should be very careful how we handle the situation. That the political parties come together. Because all of them have the sympathies of this political party. That they can reach to them and talk to them. Slow down. Mm. You know, we have the answer. We're all Sagalonians. We know where they are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, by voice, and no matter how, how you camouflage the voice, by the, the trend, you know, this is coming from this person. Let us talk to ourselves. Uh, that's, a, that's another way of bringing peace. Because really, the country is really sitting on a time bomb. Time bomb is that people just come with so many exaggerated stories. And the gullible public have to accept it. So let the politician do it. Sit, take a back seat and mm -hmm. watch the thing go wrong mm -hmm. without putting an end to it. Because ah. then you have the 2023 election. You see the way the trends are going? Mm -hmm. It's bur burden of violence. And it will, actually, it will end up affecting them also. We saw how the outcome of the 110 elec and by um, the one election came, uh, I mean, in March. Uh, yes, all, of those were, all of these things are indicators. And yet still, some politicians are keeping sealed lip and, and full hands on the issue. I think we need politicians to come out and they must speak out on this. For example, Parliament recently staged a peace with Kutsias, Makini Lives Matter. I was expecting a cross-party position on them having similar t-shirts saying, say no to hate speech and incendiary comment. These are some of the things we need to see. When people see these things, their supporters get more enticed, they get more, more affected and connected to it. But when you just come and talk, when it's the journalists, so perhaps some of us have had seen skeptically. When it's a civil society, they say, oh, they don't go corner. But when the politicians themselves come out, and they speak out, it has more meaning, it has more weight. So for me, I would say kudos to the SLPP for partly showing political willingness in coming out on this, but this is not enough. Other political parties must emulate this, and the government must, as a whole, see how a task force, I keep repeating, on hate speech, I mean, not only for politicians, bring all sides to, I mean, every aspect on the board to the fore, and see how we can curb this issue before it sounds sour someday. All right, let, let's look at the comments on, uh, on Facebook. And Ibambe Yema is saying um, the legislative should come up with um, an immediate law about hate, hate speech and crimes uh, and make it um, law. Honor, um, Ambassador Joseph, uh, Mike Joseph Kano is saying, Honorable Mwame Bango, I don't really know where um, he's standing for now because I think um, the Honorable is just saying his view. Well, um, we all know hate speech is very bad for a nation. We are or looking out um, to our MPs. So this his speech should pass into law um, in the well. And Kebi Conte is saying APC and SLBB are the biggest enemies to um, Salon's development. These two political parties have no good plans for Salon, only for their parties. Now, so forget country, very sad. Um, Ronald Abu Bangra is saying, sure, um, on, the, on the issue of um, the alleged sexual penetration, um, it happened to former IMF boss who was about to run for the French presidency mm -hmm. back then. Let justice prevail. Um, he goes on to say, let's trust the process. The case of Paolo was a clear example for us to have um, some amount of faith in the, in the judiciary. 
And um, Ronald Abu Bangura again is saying, if we don't put stringent measures towards um, informatically and insightful statement coming from um, people, it will cause mayhem come 2023. And um, Jay Rimes is saying, most of um, these people on social media are in the diaspora. They are the major problem. Um, Ronald Abu is saying the political affairs ministry is of no use. Gentlemen, <laughs> what's your take on, on, on those um, um, news before going over to, on those text messages before going over to our next? Speech? I like that last point that most of these conveyors and allers of hate speeches and NCI comments are based not in this country. I will tell you, if you are in Sierra Leone, you will not, you, you will TTT, you call it take them talk. But once they, I mean, what, I think we should be amplifying more advocacy around the new cyber crime, uh, cyber crime law. That law captures aspects of that, and I think also that aspect of engagement and letting people know what's contained in that law. We need to popularize some of those laws, but yes, I totally agree with all of those message messages that we need to do something about this, and, 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 and indeed. But for the IMF story, that can be the political side of big cases around politicians. Like, yes, the person is right. I think it's Dominic strauss mm -hmm. and at that time, that just automatically disqualified him. So what if, again, like I said earlier on, this is tilted towards the bigger picture 2023 and the fate of the ADP. But again, let's trust the process. It shows, I mean, it shows that Sierra Leoneans all across the world, we are no longer moon crews. We, can, we cannot be taken for granted. And people are getting enlightened on a daily basis. And thanks to the AYV and social media again. Had it not been for social media, how can we be getting these goods of people all across the world? So social media for me is a necessary evil. It depends on how you use it. You use it wisely, definitely you, you, you will get the benefits. Another of aspect of yes, the politics is that mm -hmm. We we'll only concentrate on fraud to become president and win. Anything of immorality should count in trying to choose your leader. Mm -hmm. But because people say, oh, are we a thief? You're not uh, a we, we, we are too partisan to the point that no, we don't no, even the, question the, the, more. No, I'm saying that it's under fraud and everything, mm -hmm. misappropriation that maybe you'll be disqualified. All these pointers we're coming about, immorality. immorality. Mm -hmm. If you <laughs> everything now should make sure hey, you well, can't well, match. Well, can match. You can't <laughs> match to become a president of Sierra Leone. <laughs> let us don't limit it to that. So let <laughs> us guide, let us broaden the scope mm -hmm. <laughs> to include all of these things. Sexual predators and everybody should not enter government policy. So. All right, um, let's look at our next speak on the Aoko newspaper. And it says Alpha Timbo and Emily Gogra reinstated. Uh, this is written by Mohamed Kabar. Let me just speak you through uh, Melvin. It says, Government in the press statement has informed the public of the reinstatement of Alpha Osman Timbo as Minister of Labor and Emily um, Kadiatu Gogra as Deputy Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education with immediate effect. The two were on trial um, brought by the Anti Corruption Commission over their alleged involvement in the rice um, donated to the government by the Chinese government for the school feeding program. Now, let me stop there firstly. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what happened with this case um, was that um, it was withdrawn from court. Mm -hmm. mm? And according to, uh, I can remember vividly, according to the statement from the ACC commissioner on um, <laughs> Twitter, he stated that um, it has only been discharged. And it can be taken back to court with um, enough and sufficient evidence and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll make sure I find that tweet, but I, I, I can remember that. And now we are seeing government reinstating um, Alpha Osman Tibo and Emily Kariatogura. Does this mean that this case is over? Oh, well, I, I don't want to be <laughs> judicial because I don't know. Well, no, 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 it's, 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 it's out of the court now. We, okay. we can't be. Well, what, what <laughs> and, and they've been reinstated into the position of which they... Hold on, they, they, they hold on. There are several strands to this one. Mm -hmm. the, the ACC said they are going to... They might reopen the case. Yes. So that's... I will agree. It's a, just a, a mere hypothesis now. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a sub to it to say, all right, this matter is done, but let's not be just like that. Let's just tag something in suspense. But generally, this matter has been one. If we are to look at the legality, I'm not a lawyer, but the ACC raised, pointed out a serious issue with regards to objections to jury and judges' trial and, and so on and so forth, and how the former to the general recommended what they never wanted. And thus, in, the, in, the, in their own consideration, they had to, to call back the case, or in their, in their opinions, refused to, they did not cooperate per se. In, give, in bringing forward more evidence. So what if actually, it, 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 what if it, it has, it, the matter turned the other way around? That's one. 
But the issue there is, is it not a, 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 another semblance of sacred, sacred cow or scapegoat? However, the long and short is, the government is doing what we call natural justice, quote unquote, and say, if then, then find you not guilty, can go with hiding the back. But generally, what does this mean for his, his moral and, and public the per perception about the person in question or persons in question? That's another subject. And what does it mean for their reputation, like I said, the image, <coughs> and so on and so forth? And going back to those ministries, will they be going with an open mind? Or will they be going with that revenge kind of mindset? No, say, that oh, was education, no, it's labor. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about, yes. I mean, the, the deputy is still going there as the, oh, as the deputy. Yeah. So what kind of mindsets are they taking back? Are they taking this open mindset or they are going with a preconceived notion that, oh, something went amiss the last time and this time around. But generally, I think this should send a message to all administrators that if you are found not guilty, you, you are going back to your job. And if you are found wanting, you pay the cost. This can mean something for, for judicial processes. It can mean something also for good governance, but how it is looked at will depend on who is speaking and from what angle. But generally, I think this matter itself, the Chinese guys, the, the matter in my public, in the, in the cut of my own public perception is that, oh, they are not guilty, but we are the guys. So I, I don't know how the judiciary fix that up, but we don't know what, what's the latest about the guys. Honorable, uh, uh, as far as um, justice and truth um, and being just is concerned, these individuals um, were not convicted of any um, um, wrongdoing. And as such, um, they were suspended um, from their positions. They should be reinstated, and they have been reinstated. What's your take on that? No, I like your name for be drug into a mode. That's in the first place. When you're a public official, I, I just mentioned that um, when you want to become public, they'll start telling you you are disqualified if you got a misappropriation of public funds or something. But other areas should be taken into consideration when you're going to lead the office. Leadership by example. So to me, because by the law, if you're not found guilty, you can be reinstated. But then you're going to create doubt in the people's mind. Mm -hmm. Abo, they know it's eating. Because the point here is it was the 6,000. You see, if they have investigated the whole rice saga, you have come to the logical conclusion what went missing. Yeah. But for now, so <laughs> it, it pleases the president to reinstate or not to reinstate. So, but which means the, the was, you was, have to was, the, was the guys also reinstated? <laughs> <laughs> so let us also look at it. Don't start dropping the bar. Sure. Mm -hmm. You see, sure. sometimes you see when you when you call the partive business, you're not final. Sure. That is why some people, when they start saying they just resign quietly and, they, and sit back. But honorable politically, do you think this is the right move to reinstate uh, these individuals again? I said the place is the president. Based on this thing, but I said to you, don't allow your name to be drugged into mud. Mm -hmm. Simple. All right. Uh, um, before go, going over to Facebook, um, le let's look at this next story on the, um, the front page of the Concord Times newspaper. And it says, um, government to shut down operations of 23 mining operations, uh, mining companies. Uh, Melvin, now it says the Director General of the National Mineral Agency, Julius Daniel Matai, has informed members of Parliament that the agency will terminate the operations of 23 mining companies that were given exploration license to operate across the country. According to the Director General, the decision was taken by the National Minerals Advisory Board the, um, because, of the com because that the companies have nothing to contribute to the country's economy. Um, this is the quote that says, we have recommended that 23 of those companies be closed because for two years now they have neither submitted comprehensive report nor paid for their license and we have to do things right. They are recommended to who? Parliament. The, uh, I mean, <coughs> that, that's interesting. I, I, I spoke with the chairman of the committee just now. I'm booked for an interview with him in which all these issues. From what I made to learn is that Parliament is telling them to. There's another publication. Yeah, there's another publication blocks, that, that states blocks, Parliament blocks. Uh, blocks the, I yes, mean, yes. Again, th th that is a very dicey issue as to the relationship between Parliament and the executive when it comes to mm -hmm. policy implementation, polit policy um, checks and balances. But in this case, I think what the Mines Committee wants to avert is that kind of repetition of SL mining versus the government of Sierra Leone kind of story, mm -hmm. wherein the matter was taken to court, not 
only SM mining, I think also it's Shandong mm -hmm. and some other mining companies, one of which I think was an IPO file one, which was lost by the government of Sierra Leone, according to what we made to land. And now Parliament is saying, oh, it's our duty to provide oversight. And we've looked at the impact of such closures. Members of Parliament, times without number, have said the closure of these mines are affecting their constituencies. I've interviewed several number of them who said, oh, yes, we want to see a fair deal for which we ne also need to benefit as a country. But we are in, we don't have something to eat while the proverbial dry dog is drying. What suffices? And that, I think, what is what the Committee on Mines is trying to do here. They are going on an oversight, according to Anabu Sainz yes. Lamina. Yes, and yes, upon exactly. the, the return of that oversight, they would have collected enough information as to what's this, the, the reality of this. But generally, I think what we are seeing here is a parliament that is doing its work. A parliament that is not limbed up. A parliament that, if they want to deliver, they can deliver. Mind, mind you, these are, these, are, these are not ordinary entities. They have employees. But on the other hand, the SMPP mm -hmm. government has been saying, for God's sake, how can you be here in this country say you are doing exploration while you are actually mining? And you've, you've explored for the past three, for the four past, years. And you're not coming out to report as to what you've explored or what you've not explored, what is derived or what mm -hmm. is not derived, or what is expense or what not expense. So that has been like a serious issue. And some people believe that, in fact, those were some of the issues for the action of the former mines minister, Honorable Rado Yoki. But the NMA has got a fundamental role. But one thing not to lose sight of is the fact that the NMA is under the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources. Mm -hmm. How much collaboration is there between the mines ministry and the NMA? And now we are seeing parliament providing this oversight function coming into to just oversee. I think, yes, the fact should be proven. If a mining company is not delivering for the, for the community, uh, at, I mean, where the company is operating and there is no reasons being advanced, I think, yes, the government should act. But again, there should be a fine balance because this is COVID-19 and we know how this mining sector is dependent on global shocks and things like that. So kudos to the Mines Minerals Committee. But again, it's not just that saying that they should put it on hold. But what suffices? Yes, we want to see good business. But yes, these businesses must not be closed just because of some of those trivial or not too much impactful reasons. Uh, Honorable, it, it's visible that um, this government, this new direction, um, wants to refine um, the mining sector. And I mean, we, we, we've seen what, what has been done in that vein with regards to um, looking at, into some of these contacts. And now um, we have a possible um, 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 cancellation of um, 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 23 mining companies. But, uh, but of course, there is a story on that also <coughs> on the new season that says parliamentary committee blocks cancellation on the grounds that um, they want to hold um, um, a stakeholders consultative um, a meeting right across the board um, with communities who are directly involved with these 23 um, mining companies that probably will have their license revoked and, and then they will get back to the National Minerals Agency on, on, on which step to take. Now, uh, according to how um, Melvin said, this, this is the right step looking at the fact that now, 23 mining companies or exploration companies uh, are, are employing roughly prob probably over 1,000 civilians. Yes. I see, that is why we hasten slowly, mm -hmm. like what the new citizens said. Call the stakeholders meeting. We have seen to close down the company. It's not the only benefit to Sierra Leone in particular. And, and the other means wherein you can fast That's track what started and they with can pay back their license. Yes, if you think the regulation, Mm -hmm. It's not in government's interest. Go back to parliament and withdraw those um, and reconsider this amendment in your in, 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 in your act. Because we allow them to invest. No matter what they must, mine is not a, 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 a cheap investment. They must have put certain money down. So if you think that policy is not good, then we should review the way we hand over exploration license. So that we we'll come back to that SL mining uh, saga or Shandong. Don't close down because when you close down, it is affecting your ordinary citizens. And it's even affecting the country's economy, the GDP, and so I on. I think that small so tax will help you. Yes. All right, so, so, so let's look at the comments on, on Facebook so far. Iban BM is saying other countries um, have hate speech as a crime, so Sierra Leone can do it too. Um, we're counting on the legislative to do um, um, something. Edwin John is saying the government is listening to social media more than the mainstream media. There is a difference between a supporter and a member of a party. I see no difference between um, Attila, Jibril, Ladev Bayor, Memuna, Rappel, and others. Um, <laughs> the government just needs to ignore these social media rants. None of them um, are patriotic. Um, Patrick Wuri is saying 
there is hate speech and there is freedom of speech. I think it's 50-50 currently. Kebi <laughs> 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 um, Conte is saying, how can we expect our country to develop if a minister is accused of stealing and reinstated um, again? These kinds of things will never happen in a developed country. Um, Edwina John is saying if they reinstate the minister for the rice saga, <laughs> then we want our rice to be reinstated as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think there are so many comments. Let me just uh, take my time and, and, and go through um, 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 them and bring them to you. Um, PD is saying, let the ACC give us our rice. Where is the rice? <laughs> in the bio government, we have um, sacred cow. In the past regime, we will hear the ACC singing songs and praises. God have mercy on um, the ACC. Uh, and uh, there, there are still comments, you know, I'm afraid I, I have to filter uh, um, um, some comments. Um, I, I think those are the comments in so far, but let me just um, take you uh, um, through. Uh, um, uh, Melvin, what's your take on the messages so far before coming to Honorable? It, it's always awesome getting other sides to our perspectives. Mm -hmm. It shows <coughs> that this is dialogue, this is not monologue. And gone are those days of monologue, where one man can just come and talk and talk and talk. Now the people have their power and they can speak and they, they have spoken on the issues. That is interesting. It's up for the policy makers, the politicians and decision makers to reflect those, those views. These are the people of Sierra Leone speaking. Had it been just Onaibu Chidi and Melvin speaking, they would say, oh, they have their biases. But now these are people, we don't know their backgrounds, we don't know the collection or the strata from which they are coming, but they are all making their input. But one thing that, come out, that has come out clearly is that the rice must be reinstated and, and the people want their rights. So perhaps the, the, the judiciary or the ACC should tell us as to, or the government itself, so the position of the rice. Uh, what happened to the rice? If the people are not guilty, oh, was it a lie on them? Or did the rice just... No, it's clear that, <laughs> that uh, there was uh, no rice. Uh, bags of checked. rice were missing. Uh, so missing. If, if these people are guiltless and the, the rice is guilty, then how can it be reinstated? There, there is a stark paradox there. Honorable, I, I'm sure many Sierra Leoneans will not be able to understand Honorable, why that paradox. Yeah. Is this buffing? A buffing? A buffing, yeah. yeah. I told you just now. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, the bar for you in this country, they keep shifting it. It should be at the high standard, but sometimes we vary it. We vary them. I tell to you, don't allow yourself your name to be dragged into mud. He asked for clean. But then, as you say, if there's not enough evidence, you reinstate. But now the people are asking, are you, have you reinstated the rice? <laughs> because there was something missing anyway, 45,000 bags. <laughs> so sometimes, I don't know what's <laughs> the... What's the uh, it's very difficult to... Do. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a paradox. Yeah, you see, it's so paradoxical. Unbelievable. They say it's if not allow you know for call and thief self. They say it's if you're not guilty. You're not but guilty. it's a loss, he lost it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, many thanks to you gentlemen. Of course, Melvin, T.J. Mansare, um, a journalist, and of course to you, Honorable pa um, Bamichi, the political analyst. They've been my guest. And this is where I bring the curtains down. You've been watching Front Figure on AYV Television on Channel 33 and also online at www.ayvnews.com and on Facebook, Africa Young Voices Media Empire. I want to say many thanks to um, our viewers on Facebook um, for their participation. And of course, also for those listening to us on Radio FM 101.6 right across the country. I want to say many thanks to my producers, Mohamed Lamin Banya and Ransford McLean and my camera operator, um, Bakal. Until we meet again, I'm Bokari Matia. Many thanks for watching and listening. <laughs>